Hi, eighth graders. My name is Mrs. Koffendaffer. I am the high school counselor at Fenville High School. And I created these videos for you to help teach you what you need to know going into the ninth grade. Now, normally I would have spent a day with you in Mrs. Blake's class and we would have went over everything there is to know, plus create your schedule. So in order to bring this to you virtually, I decided to make several smaller videos. So you see here on this slide, I am going to attempt to make six videos because I don't want you to have to spend an hour listening to me talk. So several short, small ones. So today's video is about terms, policies, and procedures. I'm going to follow that up with FHS options and opportunities, and then we'll select your courses. We'll meet your teachers. We'll have a virtual high school tour and then frequently ask questions. So today's video, terms, policies, and procedures, things you need to know in advance before creating your schedule. We just need to learn everything first and then choose. So number one, what is a diploma? The diploma is a certificate stating that you successfully finished high school. So when you're walking across stage May of your senior year with your cap and gown on, they hand you your diploma. That's your final certificate of high school saying you're done. Um, you have a list of graduation requirements to successfully complete to get that diploma. So that brings us to number two, graduation requirements. Courses that are required by Michigan Merit Curriculum and Fenville Public Schools to earn a diploma from Fenville High School. You have a list of specific core and elective courses to complete, plus earn 22 credits. Number three, core class. Courses that you must complete that are required for graduation in English, Math, Science, and Social Studies, you will end up taking 28 of these required core classes. Number four, required electives. Courses that you must take that are required for graduation in PE, Health, Foreign Language, and Art, you will end up taking eight of these electives. Next are electives, regular electives. These are your choice courses that you must take in order to earn the final 22 credits that you need to graduate. Students will need eight of these courses. And last on this page, number six, credit. Each course that you take and successfully pass in high school equals a half of a credit, so 0.5. Students need 22 high school earned credits total for graduation. So think of it like money. Each class is worth 50 cents and you need $22 to graduate. All right, next page, just a little bit more vocab. Number one, transcript. This is a document that follows you for 99 years. It lists all the courses that you took in high school, including the grade in each course, your GPA, your SAT scores, your credit count. It's used to track your high school course history. Um, you send it to colleges when you're applying to college. Employers ask for it to show proof of graduation. So this document is kept by the high school for 99 years. Pretty important. Number two, GPA. That's your grade point average. Each letter grade is worth points. For example, an A equals four, and then it goes on down the line to eventually an F equaling zero. So an A minus would be 3.7. These points are averaged together to give you a GPA. This shows how well you did in high school, and this number is used for honor roll, graduation honors, college applications, scholarship money uh, for college, lots of different reasons, really. Again, GPA is very important. Audit. Twice a year, the high school counselor reviews your transcript to track your graduation progress and man maintains an audit for every single student. The audit is a form with every requirement listed there are in boxes, and every time you complete a class, the box turns orange. I'll show you an example in just a minute. And last, number four, credit recovery. For those students that do not successfully pass a class, they need to repeat that class 
um, to graduate and they need to participate in our program called Edgenuity to recover that credit. You can do this after school, during summer school, or you may have it in your day in 11th or 12th grade as part of your schedule. Here is an example of a transcript. So first off, that monkey there, I'm just covering personal information. I borrowed this transcript from somebody who graduated a few years ago. So that's my little monkey just ignoring all the personal information behind it. The first arrow on the left side is pointing to the graduation date. So when colleges and employers ask for this, um, they're looking for that date right there. They want to show proof that you are a successful high school graduate. The second arrow on the left side there is showing you all of the courses that the student took. It starts off, it says 11-12, that's the year. So 2011, 2012, this student took algebra. And you notice there's only one course listed there for that year. That is eighth grade algebra. So this student completed algebra in eighth grade. And then the next year is ninth, and then 10th, 11th, and 12th. So you'll notice the grade level that listed there, the grade this person got, the number of credits for each grade, and then on the right side, the first blue arrow is showing cumulative GPA. That means it's taking every single letter grade there, the number of points that each letter grade is worth, and averaging them all together, all years together, for a final GPA. Her GPA was a 3.986, which is pretty darn good. The next one listed is the completed credit hours. She had 24.5 when she graduated. The next arrow is pointing towards test scores. When you're in 11th grade, you take a final, not really a final, but a big test, a state test, kind of like um, MSTEP. This one she took was ACT. Currently, now we take SAT. Similar test, but very important test. It helps you get into college. And then finally, I wanted to point out on this example is that highlighted area. So the note says, note, Benville High School requires all students to earn 22 credits in grades 9 through 12 to be eligible for graduation. Middle school credits are noted for Michigan Merit Curriculum credit only. Now that's a pretty confusing paragraph. What does that mean? Basically, it means the 22 credits required for graduation have to be high school earned, which means they only count in grades 9 through 12. So that algebra up there is an 8th grade class. So although it does work for any student to have algebra completed and the credit does come over, we're not going to count that towards the 22. Now, a lot of students over the years had said, what? Why, are you, why? Why did you make me take algebra in eighth grade and you're not even going to count it? It doesn't really mean that. Um, so no panic necessary. So let me give you some perspective. In each grade level, you have up to 12 classes that you take in a year for six for first semester, six for second semester. And those classes, if you pass them all, equal six credits. So you can earn six credits per year. Now, if you're in high school for four years, six times four equals 24, but you only need 22 to graduate. So if we didn't count that algebra, that's actually would have been 25 credits. So no big deal. You have plenty. It does not hurt anything. But I wanted to point out what that paragraph means because it seems confusing when you read it. All right, moving on, I have an example now of a credit audit. Credit audit is listing every single graduation requirement in boxes. So you can see down English, math, science, social studies, PE, art, foreign language, and electives. Every time you complete a class, a box turns orange. Now, in our next video, when I talk about options and opportunities, I'm going to dive more in depth with what do you really need to graduate. But this is your first look at what an audit looks like. And last for vocab, a lot of students ask me this, so I always make sure I mention it every year. A freshman is a ninth grader. Next year, you guys will be freshmen. Next 
As a 10th grader, you're a sophomore. In 11th grade, you're a junior. And in 12th grade, you are a senior. All right, let's talk about grading periods. The high school is on two semesters with four marking period type of system. Marking period or semester one has marking period one, marking period two. Semester two has marking period three, marking period four. Let's talk about those percentages there and what those mean. So grades are based on your final grade. You get final grades for semester one and semester two. That's where you earn credit. Although yes, you do get grades for marking periods. They are averaged together to give you a final grade. So a marking period one would be 40% of your grade. Marking period two is 40% of your grade. And then you take a final exam which is worth 20%. Those three grades are averaged together to give you one final semester one grade, and that's the grade that is displayed on your transcript. So, new term then, final exam. At the end of each semester, you have one final test that covers all of the content for that semester, and that grade counts for 20%. So, fun fact, if you have an F, you, you've been struggling in the class, you didn't do well in the marking periods, and you're ready for the final exam and you have an F. If you get a 77% or higher on the final exam, you pass the class even if you had an F. So disregarding the averaging, if it's a 77% on the final, you get credit. So that just points to how important final exams are. Not only that they're worth 20%, but they can also bail you out of a situation where you have an F and you can study like crazy and prepare for that final exam, get that 77 and you didn't lose your credit. Next, we're going to talk about high school grading. I have listed here all of the grades A through F the percentage in which they are listed, so an A is equal to 93 to 100%, on down to a D minus is 60 to 62%. And then next column listed there is the GPA points associated with each letter grade. So if you got a B minus, you're looking at earning 2.667 GPA points. So, I want to point out on the bottom there, AP Advanced Placement. We actually have two grading scales in the high school. We have the regular one listed here, which is called unweighted. And then with AP courses, that grading scale is called weighted. What does that mean? That means if you take an advanced placement course, you're taking a very rigorous challenging course. And the weighted grading scale is a little bit of an award for taking a course like that. So you take the letter grade you got. This is the example. If you got a B, which is normally worth three GPA points, you times it times 1.25 and you end up with 3.75 GPA points. So it's meant to give you more points for taking a more difficult class. School day schedule. This is new going into next year. Normally, we had first hour and then summit, which is the same as your pride. And then third, fourth hour was um, fit around lunchtime and then fifth and sixth. So you see that it's a little different going into next year. We're going to have everybody will be the same first, second, and third. In the middle between third and fourth hour is where we'll have lunch and summit. So you go to first, second, and third, and either you have a lunch and then you switch right after lunch to summit, or you have B lunch, which means you go to summit first and then switch and go to B lunch. And then everybody would have the same fourth, fifth, and sixth hour. Lunches are not based on grade level. They're mixed nine through 12 lunches, and it will be a little bit random if you get A or B lunch. Um, that will be something you find out in midsummer. Food service, breakfast, 7.15 to 7.40 every morning, and breakfast is free to all students. Lunch, we have two lunches, A and B. Lunches are mixed grade level, so you'll eat lunch with 9th through 12th graders. Lunch is free to all students. There are a la carte items that are available for purchase, like extra snacks and beverages. 
Microwaves are available if you bring your own lunch. We have a closed campus, which means you can't leave during lunch, but the gym is open for those students that enjoy playing a game of basketball or throwing around the volleyball. Attendance policy. Truancy is the first one listed there. Students who accumulate several unexcused absences will be considered truant and disciplinary action may occur. Tardy. If you enter the classroom after the bell rings, you will be considered tardy. You still enter the class, the teacher will write you up, and you will receive a lunch detention the following day. If you are more than 10 minutes late, this will be recorded as an unexcused absence. If you're excused by a staff member, you just need to make sure you have a pass to enter class so you don't get the tardy. If you accumulate too many tardies, further disciplinary action will probably occur. Late procedure. If you're late to school, especially in the morning, you'll ring the doorbell, you'll speak with Mrs. Klausner, the high school secretary, and then you'll report to the high school office for a tardy pass. You'll either be marked absent if it's more than 10 minutes or you'll be added to the lunch detention list. Your parents should definitely always call and excuse you to prevent some of this. And lastly, lunch detention. Students will be placed on lunch detention the following day if they're tardy. They'll be called out of class a few minutes early the next day to get their lunch from the cafeteria and get a lunch to go. And then they report to Mrs. Leslie in the detention ISS room and they will serve a silent lunch. Good to know policies. Number one, the cell phone policy is a big one. Cell phones need to be put away, out of sight, and silent during class. If a teacher sees your phone, they have the right to take it and lock it in the safe. You can pick up your phone after school. The second time offense, your parent has to come pick it up. Cell phones can be used during class, I mean, <laughs> in between class, during lunch, before school, after school. If your parent has an emergency and needs to reach you, they can call the office and we'll get in touch with you immediately. That's usually the number one worry when you can't have your phone. What if there's emergency? We have lots of ways to get you and we can get in touch with you fast. Earbuds and headphones. Keep those earbuds and headphones off your head during class. You obviously can't hear the teacher if you have your headphones in even dangling from your ears. Keep those out of sight. Backpacks need to be kept in your locker. That's a school safety issue. Parking permits. If you're ready to drive already by ninth grade, all right. This might not affect you until 10th or 11th or 12th, but students need to have their vehicle registered in the office and you must park in the student parking lot. Hats and hoods. Hats and hoods are a distraction to others and teachers and it's a school safety issue. So we ask that you keep your hats and hoods off your head. Um, we wanna be able to see your face. Athletic eligibility, your grades are monitored every two weeks. Students need to keep their grades passing with no more than one failing grade to be eligible. See the student handbook for further details. And if you're interested in exploring that further, the handbook is um, posted on Fenville's website. Student expectations. So number one, be nice. Not only are we involved in the be nice program in which we are aware of students and how they're feeling and students take the pledge in school each year to be nice. We also want students to behave in that way too. Be nice, be kind, be respectful. And we are good hawks and we ask students to be honest, be accountable, be willing to try be kind and be scholarly. The scheduling procedure. Now that'll be another video where we dive deep into this topic. But overall, number one, we're gonna look at your needs. What do you need for ninth grade? And what are you interested in? And number two, we're gonna look at all the options. In order to make good choices, you have to know what the options are. And then number three, we select them. Now in a normal year, I would have you log into PowerSchool and you select the courses for yourself. But since that's a little tricky this year, we're gonna do just a survey form and you're gonna select courses and then I'll enter them in for you. So we'll have a lot more on that topic coming up. 
So this is the end of my video number one, rules and policies and all that good stuff. But I want you to see the survey posted on Google Classroom. It is two questions only, very short, won't take much time. But I want you to answer two questions for me. And I'm going to use the um, responses for the last video, video number six, for frequently asked questions. So no names. I don't need to know who you are or who's asking the question. I just want to know how you're feeling right now. So fill those out for me and then look forward to video number two, options and opportunities, everything that Fenville High School has available for you. All right. All right. That's a wrap for video number one. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Thanks.